This tutorial for Design 3D SC is going to walk through the process of arranging and setting up and then eventually rendering a clock, like a, a, an alarm clock type of object. And um, I've included a start file here that has the components of the clock. And assuming you're new to working in both Design 3D and 3D itself, um, I've provided these so that you don't necessarily have to go through all the creation, but you can get a feel for working with arranging a scene and setting up uh, the components. So uh, what we'll, we're going to go ahead and do is um, we'll take a look at this. There's some uh, hands in here, too, that we're going to do a little bit of work with. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, come to the top up here, and we're going to work with the bell. So I'm making an assumption that you've probably watched the introductory videos that I've uh, done for SC. And one of those walks through uh, the basic uh, usage and explanation about shapes and instances. So we're going to use that a lot in this tutorial here. And uh, hopefully you'll get a sense of why that's so important to use shapes and instances. OK, so generally when um, I start a model, and create a model. I've done it such that the components, especially if they're very symmetrical like these, have been modeled around one of the global axes. So in this case, it was modeled around the y-axis and just sits at the center of the universe, or 3D universe right here. Now we need to get it into position. So the arm up here is such that this whole component here should be resting over here. And then we're going to have another one exactly on the opposite side. So I'm going to temporarily move some of the pallets out of the way here and then bring them back when we need to see them. When you're working with the scene, I would definitely encourage you to work at the very center of the universe and then arrange things after you've set, set things up in a nice orderly fashion here at the center. So there are two components to this right here. There's the actual bell shape, and then there uh, is this central thin piece that attaches with it. So both of those are going to be included. So select both of them. So you would just click and then hold the shift key and then select the second one right there. And you'll bring up the resource palette. So if the resource palette is on your screen, if it's not, you can just bring it up by going to the Windows menu. So with both of those selected right here, make sure the Shapes tab is active and then click New. In the window that pops up, you want to make sure that both of these options are enabled. That'll just make sure it's going to take whatever we have selected and move that into a shape. So we'll call this Bell. Or If there are multiple components, I usually call it an assembly. Bell assembly. And then the window that pops up, we can see this right here, both of those components there. Really, at this point, we don't need to do much more except just close the window down that, that popped up. So the trick here is to get this into position. Now, the clock itself, again, do you see this line right here? And then the blue line here, that indicates the center of our 3D universe. And the center of rotation for it is going to be at the center of the clock right here. So what we would ideally like to do is what, what you don't want to do is try and grab it like this and then kind of move it into position and then and then rotate it like that. That That's not terribly efficient. And I bring that up because I actually get files periodically from people who have done things like that. It's, it's very awkward when you're working in, in 3D and you're not used to it. So that's why I'm doing this tutorial. So what we're going to do is the position this way through the z-axis right here is correct. So I've set that part up so we don't need to move it that way. Um, although it does look like I'm intersecting slightly right there. We're just, <laughs> we're just going to ignore that for right now. Um, so what we want to do is we want to rotate it, except we want to rotate it so that it's at the center of the universe, which also happens to be at the center of this cylindrical uh, clock body. So what we'll do is I'm going to switch over to um, outline mode so we can see through. Although the mesh is pretty dense right here, so it may be difficult to see the, the pivot. At the center of each object, there's a pivot. Okay, so if I rotate 
you can see that little blue dot right there. That's the pivot. That's the center point. That can be moved. And that's a, it is that pivot point around which an object rotates. So we'll come up to the scripting menu and there's an item here called set object origin. And it's along the, z, the y axis right here that we need to move it. Okay, so it needs to move down from its current position and then end up right at the center there. So just type in zero along the y axis. You can see it looks like it's numerically off very, very, very marginally along the x. You can correct that by typing zero, but that's really not too, too relevant. The depth, the z axis is unimportant. So you click OK and it will move it. Now again, because the mesh is pretty dense down here, it may be difficult to see until, until you rotate it, but you see it moved it right down there. So now when we come back to the front view, I can grab with the rotation tool over here, I can grab this handle and rotate that until it looks about correct. So I'm just going to go right about there. Now we need to duplicate this on the other side. So remember, this is an instance, so we can, we can duplicate this as many times as we need, and it's just duplicating an instance back to a single data set down here in the resource palette. Okay, so I'm going to come over to the object properties palette because this is where we'll get information about what that rotation value is. So it's just a hair over 30.5 degrees rotated around the z-axis. So this is what I'll do. Let's go ahead and double click this value here and then we can simply copy that. And hold the option alt key down and just and that'll and then click hold and rotate and that's going to cop pull out a copy. So it's it's just going to create another instance. And all that really matters is that you get it rotated just a little bit just so long as you get a, a duplicate pulled out and then we can just come over here and, and punch in that value except in this case we need it to be a negative value so an exact opposite of the other value there so we would paste that value in there and hit return to validate that and it's going to pop that over to the other side okay so there we go so we have both of those um, in position now um, the next piece that we're going to work on that's going to we're going to add just one more level of complexity to is the little leg down here the little part that it rests on the little stand so we did a single level of an, uh, shape and instance at the top and this down here is going to introduce um, one just this one extra level of complexity so if I look at this in the left view what I would like to do is have this attached so it's essentially perpendicular to this angled surface right here. Now, what we, um, what I'm going to do is I'm go going to just copy this temporarily and move this over into another scene to help demonstrate um, something here. So I'm going to say new empty project and I'm just going to paste that in front and it pastes into the exact same position that it's in. So to make this really obvious, if I come over here and rotate this at a fairly extreme angle, I'll, I'll take it to a 45 degree angle right here, okay? When we rotate this, and then if I angle the view here, zoom in, so when I grab this, you can see it's simply going to rotate around its local z-axis by doing that. Okay, so we have that at that angle right there, and that rotates it around that local um, z-axis. So if we come over here, back to our original scene, and we position this, we're just going to come over here and manually position this so it looks like it's it just see so it's kind of intersecting a little bit, and then and you can eyeball this. This this is not absolutely critical to be exactly perpendicular, but we can take this right here and just rotate it so it looks like it's perpendicular to that surface. So now what's going to happen is if I come back to the front view here we can see that what we're wanting to do is take this because it can't rest on one on one leg here it's going to need one here and it's going to need one over here but if we try and rotate this one at this point it's going to rotate simply around the center because uh, by default that pivot is at the center of the object but as soon as we try and let's say we we moved the um, the pivot like we did for the bell shape at the top it's still, and grab one of these handles, it's still going to tend to rotate at that angle. 
So what we need to do now is we need to create um, a new um, shape for this. So we're going to come down here and we're going to come back to the shape palette and we're going to come over here and click new and let's just call this leg okay and then type in okay so we look at this actually from the left there and so there it has that rotation value so we can come back in here now and we can see that the pivot is right there at the center but you'll notice that the new this new bounding box around this is now um, it matches the global uh, coordinate system. So anytime you create a new group or new instance on it, it's automatically aligned uh, to the world coordinate system. So it's a nice square bounding box with no transformation. It's got no rotation, scale, uh, etc. So what we can do is we can then come back up here and say set object origin and move this instance's origin right up here to zero along the y-axis. Type in zero there and you can see that pop up there. So now when we rotate this, it's going to rotate around the local z-axis right here, but because we have no rotation for this container, if you want to think about that container, it's simply going to rotate um, just around the z-axis. It's not going to have any angling off if, as if we had tried to rotate the original uh, piece of data there. So now we can come over here and rotate this Okay, and I'm not picking an exact, I'm just kind of eyeballing that there. And then we'll do the exact same thing that we did up for the top. Come over here and grab this value. And then what, if it's negative, you just do the, the opposite. You would do a positive value. So I would grab that value there, come down here, hold the Option Alt key, and drag a copy to the other side, and then just paste in that exact value return and there we go so let's say that we wanted to come in here and and again it rotated exactly around just the z-axis so if I double click this it's going to jump us into that original um, shape here now let's say that for some reason we wanted to come in and um, alter something about uh, about this right here. We needed to change something. The original mesh, so this is an original mesh object right here. See, I can come in here and, and look at the polygons and edit the polygons, whatnot. But from the standpoint, if we look at this from the left, so we've rotated this. Ideally, whenever you've created an original mesh right here and you are intending to have multiple duplicates of it around, it is ideal to have the very base level of your uh, hierarchy of your mesh be untransformed. But in this case our, our direct mesh is is transformed. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here and copy that exact value again. And then I'm going to type in a zero. So there we have that untransformed but what ends up happening is we come here and you see it alters them here because these are instances of this of this data set this data set right here. So what I'm going to do is inside of this right here, I'm going to set this native piece of geometry back into another shape. And I'm going to call this leg uh, geometry untransformed or something descriptive. Okay, so here we go. So this is this is nice and untransformed, very orderly. We could come back in and easily make changes to it without having to account for any weird angle 